Oh, that's a imagine? classic it, mac it, cake. It, How dude, sweet. It, it's like you can get apple and diabetes. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Brett and everyone watching us live over here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast 3 p.m. Come say hi. I double dare you. What's up? What's new? <laughs> Steve's a little bit older this week. You got his birthday wrong. You didn't get his birthday wrong. You you I, aged him I, unnecessarily. I well, actually, he's There's older no, than I said. I told that, you he that, was. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So it was my Steve husband's uh, birthday last Friday, and we went to the Western Museum of Flight at the the local uh, airport here at Zamperini Field. And that was a lot of fun. It's a, a local museum that I've never been to, even though it's right in my backyard. <laughs> so it was time to go there. And he enjoyed getting into some of the old planes. Uh, that The one he, he, I took a picture of him in a 1960s plane. I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> I'm not as knowledgeable on airplane models as he is. <laughs> or types of planes. <laughs> Did everybody have a good time? Yes. Nice. We had a lot of fun. It was right a lot on. of fun. <laughs> well, I dared to try to do something earlier this week. I tried to watch a movie online, people. I did. I tried uh... to rent a movie. Dragon Ball Zen oh. Super Superheroes. I've been patiently waiting, and that's finally out. Okay. I want to check this out. So. Voodoo has a video rental service. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I can rent it from the Voodoo's. I go to the Voodoo site. What do you do? Old reaction. Let's Google. Can I use this under Linux? People are like, nah, it doesn't work. And you go, it's like, man. All right. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Amazon. Wait, can I do it on Amazon? Maybe. And I go to Amazon and I'm like, oh, look, I can rent it. This is nice. This is neat. Let me click on it. I get a warning. It's like, yeah, by the way, um, you're not going to be able to watch it in HD. No. Oh, yeah, because you were on desktop. <laughs> like, really? we, we got to deal with this. That's fascinating. I'm like, wow, oh, well, maybe I'm just not going to watch this. And I saw it pop up on uh, Google, on Google YouTube rentals. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, Just fine. watch it there. Yeah, I'll do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Whatever, that's easy. And it's like four ninety nine, not a big deal. I hit it, and Google says... Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to watch it in HD either. Oh, yeah, you got mm -hmm. you can watch it. You can Chromecast it. I'm like, no, I just yeah, I just want to sit here while I'm working, and you know, this is something I, I want to catch up on. I'm going to zoom around in it, and uh, no, not not going to do it. I'm like, I'm not giving you five bucks to watch something in 480p. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Not. I, I normally watch my rentals on a smart TV, which is, you know, has no problem getting the HD or 4K signal. So, but on desktop, it's sometimes a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> the problem with all of this, dealing with this nonsensical DRM in 2023 is what the industry has not learned yeah. was never was the question asked if I was going to watch this movie. I've watched the movie, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> After exhausting the other options of trying to support the creators. Because I like DBZ. I don't care. I'm an old man. I've been watching DBZ for 40 years, man. Mm -hmm. It was an all right movie. Anyway, that's my review of it. Oh, <laughs> well, at least you got to watch it then. <laughs> I did. It irritated me. It irritated me. You know, this is something that yeah. like Steam has gotten right. That's why I like Steam so much is it's made it. And that's why one of the reasons maybe Steam has been so successful, the game store, and they've made a few video games in the past, is they've made it easy. Like, oh, I'd like to play that game. Oh, click, done. Yeah. Right? One button. <laughs> but you would think. <laughs> yeah, think? to rent a video. Right. Uh, <laughs> I know. Just... I know. It's so annoying. You know, it's like they have all those wide vine settings and sometimes they change them and then the browsers aren't, you know, up to date on on the security settings. It's just annoying. <laughs> or, or they don't make it run on Linux, even though the back end of Netflix and Hulu and everything is done on Linux and <laughs> and their developers need to use Linux to test it. 
if there's an analog loophole and this is this was just you know this is what people like like to drag out i'm like yeah yar this is why i do all the piracy and i'm like nah homie we both know you do all the piracy because you cheap um but (laughs) yeah that was that perfect example of well i wasn't asking you if i could watch the movie I was just trying to give you some money while I was doing it. So, yeah. DRM in 2023. And it wasn't even a Linux issue, which I, I guess made it sting less because that sting is yeah. spread out to everybody else. It doesn't matter if you're on Windows or... Mm-hmm. I take this back. Safari on Macintosh somehow has the magical ability, yes. the blessing and the approval. To the HD, yeah. Like, oh, that, that's fascinating. One other thing. I'll bring this up real quick. Uh, for... My brothers and sisters out there that like to play around with audio, you're probably familiar with your, your basic audio levels, your hi-fi levels um, for like home equipment is going to be minus 10. Pro audio levels traditionally plus four. And I've always wondered with this um, Army AIO that I have, like the levels were always hot at plus four. I'm like, okay. And I couldn't, I mean, you can always gain stage around this. This is not a problem. And normally this wouldn't even be a problem for anybody, but I got some outboard gear that we use live. And I'm digging around in the manual, and I run across this. RME in their infinite wisdom has changed. Plus, minus 10 is now plus 4. Minus 10 is now the new plus 4 reference level on the card. Mm. And plus 4 is plus 13. Mm. I don't have words mm. to explain how grumpy I was when I realized this. I'm like, <laughs> I man. Because <bet. laughs> I've had this card for now for like almost a year. Maybe like 8 months. Mm. So I had to go back and redo the gain staging. I, mm, rawr. 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 There. <laughs> there. Um, and outside of that, that's pretty much it. Uh, here's a plug, free plug for CR Droid. Uh, go back and watch the pre-show if you want to see me uh, gush over that a little bit. If you're still one of those wild and wacky individuals that go back and root your devices, mm-hmm. install custom ROMs. Seal of approval on the Nexus 6. But nice. Unfortunately, my mobile device, Joel Riot, is not powered by unicorns. But these are. Oh, <laughs> but the Pine Tab uh, Five might be. <laughs> so the Pine Tab Two we actually talked about last week with an ARM RK thirty five sixty six sixty four bit system on chip will be available for pre order tomorrow, April thirteenth, and so will the Pine Tab Five which is based on the JH71104 64-bit Risk 5 SOC. Woohoo! And here we thought that was uh, an April Fools <laughs> joke, but it wasn't. And the Pine Time uh, Pine Tab 5 is actually the Star 64 single board computer released earlier this month. So that's the SOC that it's using. And it is extremely experimental with limited Linux support and actually is to be viewed as a development platform, (laughs) according to Pine64. Wait a minute, Pine64 (laughs) releasing development? What? Yes, even more development than their normal development and experimental (laughs) devices. (laughs) And what's the the difference between the two... two, uh, uh, tablets is the Pine Tab Five is uh, is deep map, matte black colored, while the Pine Tab Two is is silvery gray. And uh, you know the Pine Tab Two has the Danked Nix Arch Linux for ARM software. Uh, can can be described as very serviceable, and you know uh, there's little doubt that before long improvements will be made. And additional functionality enabled. And even though it, the Pine Tab 2 is considered somewhat experimental, the Pine Tab 5 is way <laughs> experimental and it doesn't come with an OS installed at all. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you definitely would have to. You like uh, those options, like this one boots, yeah. this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we thought. Thought this might be unicorn meat from last last week on April Fools, <laughs> but it turns out it's it's a real product. It's just experimental. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, 
will always take the issue, though. The only thing that makes me go, okay, here's two things. We, we got to judge as this tradition, as the photoshops. Oh, let, let's have a look. Let's have yeah, a look. it's. Uh, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> the edges <no>. are her. <laughs> oh, no. A little jaggedy edges little, little there. Bit, I mean. <laughs> Anybody who's ever had to crack open a copy of the GIMP knows, like, oh, I know that, I know that look, because I've tried to make my own transparent pings and whatnot. The trick around this, if anybody from Pine64 is uh, watching, is you take the free select tool, the node-based one, and you draw the nodes around it, then you hit R to oh, convert yeah. that, then you hit Control x that, that, that will save you from, like, trying to hand <laughs> shave everything. You can just draw the lines around it and clip it. Yeah. I use that all the time. <laughs> ah, see, you learn something. Um, the only thing I have any issue with whatsoever is uh, the screen resolution. Yeah, it is. It is sad that it isn't uh, full HD, but I, you know, it I is mean, 1280 by 800 at 10.1 mm -hmm. inches. It's an IPS LCD panel. Don't get, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be crisp enough, but I. I've kind of gotten accustomed to having at least like, you know, the 2K equivalent on my 10 inch devices. Yeah. But I mean, at the price, four gigs of video, uh, not video RAM, four gigs of the memory RAM and uh, 64 gig EMMC. We were talking in the pre show. I don't know if I'm brave enough, nay, bold enough to break out the uh, like risk. Risk is like the thing you absolutely want to play with, right? Yeah. That is 100% the toy device. <laughs> Maybe the arm one. I don't know what I'd do with it, but and again, this is like old stodgy Vin Stone, like well, it has to have a practical purpose. Like, get out of here, Vin. We want to have fun. Um <laughs> And eventually it will have a practical purpose once once bugs are worked out and the software is compatible completely. <laughs> this is it where just those tricksy time. hobbitsies at Pine yeah. sixty four always get you though. It's a hundred and fifty nine dollars. I'm like, I could probably just buy one each, couldn't I? <laughs> and still have some fun with it. That price, who cares? Uh, I look forward to seeing because I think this has been a little bit of a holy grail. Yeah, it has having been. like a good Linux tablet, right? Yeah, at least and for the, me, it 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 really has. And it, you know, Pine Tab, you know, Pine sixty four can do this with the Pine Tab, and they they've proven it with the Pine Phone and their other devices. So the I, hardest I, thing is shipping the hardware, and they've proven that they can yeah, do that. And I know software absolutely. developers getting ready to like come over to my house and be like, "What? Would you just say Tri really <laughs> difficult to ship hardware?" Trust me. Um, yeah. yeah, good times. Hey, I want to give this a little bit of shout out. I saw um, Biatko posted in nice. our Discord earlier this week about a program that I use day in and day out. Um, even though I don't actively use it, it starts on this Threadripper system that has a thirty sixty. Mm -hmm. This comes from R Linux, yes, Reddit. Every now and then you get a good post from Reddit, though. They're few and far between, but you know. Yeah. Final call for maintainers to help GWE from abandonment. So about like six months ago, the developer of let me show show people what GRE is, Ben, before you start talking about it. This guy. If you get an NVIDIA card. Maybe you got this. This does a bunch of neat stuff. Um, GPU yeah. memory overclocking profiles, custom fan curves, power limits, historical data graphs. I mean, look at this graph. Ah, it is all That's there. Sweet. <laughs> now, he needed some help with it. Why? Oh, man, Roberto. Uh, like, Yo, you know, I got to go over the dark side. I'm going to embrace Team Red. And I'm like, no, don't do it. You're the chosen one. That's going to make somebody angry. Ah. <laughs> I look forward to the comments. Um, nobody stepped up. He's asked about six months ago. Like, I want somebody to maintain it. He's got an AMD card. This happens all the time. Completely understandable. Like this version of um, GWB, like the flat pack no longer functions. This is called BitRot. It's what I call BitRot. Maybe that's not the official definition. Go check. I'm Miriam Webster. Looking mm -hmm. for somebody to pick up the main data. You know, of course, like six months ago, somebody showed him like, hey, I'll help. And that conversation just kind of fizzled out. Fortunately. Um, a gentleman by the name of Armit has stepped up. He's like, I think I can handle this. I think I can take over this. And I just want to give this a shout just to get some additional attention on it. Just maybe so there'll be a backup next time in case Armit like, goes to Team Blue or something like that. Because yeah. you can go to Team Blue now, I guess, kind of. <laughs> additional con contributors would be nice. Uh, yeah. 
Absolutely. I use this day in and day out, though. Like, no joke. Yeah. It keeps me from going stark raving mad because I have the 3060 in this box because it's not a gaming juggernaut, but I wanted um, the latest and greatest, and I wanted that 12 gigajoules of the video memory RAM for DaVinci Resolve, which I use pretty regularly now. NVIDIA. As you make six and eight gig cards and you're trying to sell them to people. Shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what this card does, like maybe like a lot of your cards at home, is it has the zero fan mode. Or if it's Very, not hot yeah. enough, so the nice. fans cut off. Yeah. And this is just like dual axial. And like, oh, that's cool. Here's the catch. The temperature inside of this case is on that razor line when it's operational of mm. just cool enough to where the fans don't work except for that one femtosecond to where they cut on and they go when they cut on when they speed up and the oh, second okay. the second airflow goes over i was like oh, i'm cool enough i don't need these fans to work anymore so it cuts them back off then you wait three seconds and it goes hey i'm getting warm it goes, <laughs> it's that you never hear the yeah. fans but you hear that little startup you know when you first get yeah the <laughs> impossible to live with like oh i thought i was gonna like oh, I, I can adapt to this like no that's how i found green within me then it's got a nice little cli interface where you can set your fan curves activate it on system start and say you know what just let these fans run at 35 percent. and you can't do that with the nvidia settings application you can set <laughs> yeah, fan speed yeah. but you can't set a curve and i know and there's profiles. other ways. yeah this was yeah. the easiest way to do it and you know it was available on the flat back. Hopefully they get back up and working though. You played with it a couple of times. Oh you? yeah. Actually it's a marvelous uh, green with envy is a marvelous app and I've installed it on multiple machines and use it regularly. I, I gosh on, on whenever, when I had my 1080 uh, TI in this machine, I used it. I, I booted it with every, every launch of uh, Linux. Uh, I <laughs> just, just, Using it for simple uh, monitoring GPU temps, I used it for that. And if I remember, the very first game I used it with was a uh, Doom 2016 because that made the card howl so loud, <laughs> and I was able uh, to adjust the uh, fan speeds. Have you ever had that so, happen? Yeah, you got your headphones on. And yeah, you're, you're playing, and like, you can what? hear it. What's that noise? And you like lift your headphones, like whoa! And she's got the fans like, zzz, and like. I didn't know you could make that noise. Interesting. Yes. So green with envy is where you know that was that was when I first started using it when I was playing Doom twenty sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the fantastic work, and I hope the new maintainer um, live long, prosper, and just to get some eyes on it again. All this to be in our show notes after the fact. Yeah, go check it out. It's a great program. Mm -hmm. At least until um, we can jump over to maybe Team Red. I, I, I want to Intel. I say it like Battle Mage. I got, I got such high hopes for Battle Mage. Don't mess that up, Intel, please. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> we, we need player three in the GPU market. We do. We, need, we, we need, do. We got to get that disruption. There's Absolutely. To come in there. Maybe, may, you know, Roberto, now that he's switching to AMD, maybe he could, he, he could solve that unicorn that me and Ven have been wanting to have, have an easy uh, GUI to adjust brightness on your monitor with I an want, AMD GPU. I want color control. And color control. control and, yeah. yeah, to make it yeah. really easy to set that. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to thump you in your ankles if you come to me and say, well, just install KDE or GNOME. I'm like, no, I, yeah. I, want, I want a universal <laughs> portable app. Yeah. Unless you're not like getting thumped in the ankles, and which is a weird one. All right. Mm -hmm. I released something. I do a series on mm -hmm. Linux Teamcast called OBS Basics, you know, where, where I show people like, hey, this is how you do multi-track recording. You know, way back in the day, I showed you how to set up a browser source before we had official browser source. How do you use OBS WebSockets? How do you use NDI? I'm getting ready to do a couple of things down the road, but I wanted to show people something a little bit different this week, which is how I build OBS for Debian, which is effectively Debian 12 right now. Debian testing is Debian 12, and put that in a package and get it installed. 
And of course, I start this out with just, hey, I know there's an official build guide. It's linked in the description. It's linked in our website. But maybe you want to play around with some of the upcoming features, you know, like lossless mm -hmm. audio support and multi-track in the simple tab. Or you want to play around with some upcoming things, like there's the new NV encode round two, which you can play around with right now. What's just called Jim NV encode. Show you how to do that. It's easy. It's not scary. It's not spooky. There's even automated build scripts if you want to go that route. But this will get you going. I mean, it's straightforward. Maybe it'll be the first time you've played around in a terminal. It'll give you that insight of like, maybe this is the way to do it. And a fair warning, this is the VIN way, which, you know, is frighteningly close to the wrong way, but hey, it's a lot faster. And I'm just going to walk you through this about your dependencies, because you're going to need some new dependencies with this latest version of OBS because it's updated the web sockets and um, on Debian, I should say. We're going to clone the Git. We're going to install a Chromium embedded framework. We're going to configure it. There's your build options. You're going to compile it. I still use um, check install to build Debian packages. We're going to install it and we're going to run it. That's it. But maybe you just want to like, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, I was talking with WinPress, um, Wimpy, because we had a laugh. Like we have two different approaches for compiling OBS. He builds the kitchen sink approach. He wants everything. Mm. You know, he, he's mm -hmm. even got like stream effects built into it. And I do the apps. I, I strip it for parts, man. When I get done with OBS, it, <laughs> what does it support? Jack. What else? Jack. Well, that, that link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll walk you through the different options, you know, like Pulse support also, VST, VLC, uh, V4L, which you can enable, can and disable. And of course, like AJA, if you have a AJA Kona card, you would know because those things are frighteningly expensive. And um, yeah, just play around with it. And that information's there. And like with any guide I do, I'll keep this updated. Not that Debian changes very often, especially when we're this close, you know, code freeze. It'll be there and I'll keep it up to date for the lifetime, for the life cycle of Debian 12. So it'll be there. There you go. That's all I got to Yay, say. Van. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Going to be doing an OBS video showing people how to take advantage of the lossless audio that you can access from the simple menu. This is something you've been able to do in OBS for a long, long time. I've shown people how to do it, but I show them the advanced tab and I'm like, okay, you need to select, you know, your PC, MSLE, S32LE and how to do the multi-channels and like the differences between, you know, your 16, 24 bit, 32 bit float, well, 32 bit and 32 bit floating point. I'm going to try to explain that to people. I'm going to do a tip nice. too. And why you would want to do it, why it's a good idea um, and why it's there in the simple tab. What do you do with these new features? Like what's the difference between, you know, the containers, like your move containers, your Matroska. Matroska. Yes. <laughs> Brain does not have any of that. Um, your FLVs, MP4s, and what audio codecs that you can put in there. You know, and I, I think that might be informative. Because oh, absolutely. I, we're recording this show. And I want to be able to use it, so I'm, I'm recording it into like a intermediate format. I'm using uh, Avid DNX HDSQ, HR, recording at 440. And like a lot of people are like, what? Bless you, Ben. Uh, do you have a cold? I'm trying to explain what that is. But this is recorded with 32-bit uh, float because our entire audio chain is 32-bit float after it leaves the DAW because our audio is in the DAW over here and it's being sent over the network to this computer in real time to OBS and all that's 32 bit because that's just the way NetJack works. And I don't want to do dithering. I don't want to bust it down to 24 bit. I want to keep it like that all the way until we do the final export. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're just going to run over that. I'm sure like six people will find it interesting, Jill, but I'm going to yeah, make sure those that's... six people have an awfully good time. No, it, it's, it's wonderful, Vin, that you're doing this. In fact, as a teacher, one of the, I, I would always do a segment on all the different codecs and audio codecs and what's, what's best, what formats best used for what purpose. And I would test my students on it. <laughs> so it's, this is really great information, particularly for all those people out there using OBS. And there is a, lo a lot of them that don't understand all the, the terminology and what everything does. There's a bunch of fun things to do. And, you know, what makes me really happy is they finally got the multiple um, multi-track audio and the simple source for people. Because mm. I think that was another yeah. thing people were shying away from. 
because I knew I lost people the second I said go to the advanced tab and you just ended up with like that wall of yeah the wall of it's overwhelming yeah Yeah. 30 different options now you'll just have the multi-track which is six I think it's total of six tracks and to get people in the habit of recording like their vocal versus like game audio you know you've Mm -hmm. seen some of like our OBS settings I'll have I'm at six, I'm using six tracks, but I'm using two tracks per track because the stereo track is two mono tracks if you're brave yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> you can get away with some things. Yeah. Uh, well, your virtual cam uh, tutorial, I use all the time, Ben. So that's a good one. Even though. Secret. Here's why I make them jump because I'm getting <laughs> old and I forget how to do stuff. So yes. If I make so, it- yeah. For your own reference, you can take well, it's a look. nice, nice that the new the OBS now has the virtual cam automatic. But you remember when we had to install the plugin? Mm-hmm. So I used your handy tutorial for that, and it was excellent. And I've mm-hmm. I've used that version of OBS with that plugin uh, well, a I'm lot, gonna, actually. <laughs> it's built in now, which now. is really nice. Yeah. Um, uh, things of it's good to see where OBS is compared to where it started. Oh, absolutely. It's I think amazing. It's a fantastic thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Quick shameless plug. If you don't know, we finance our little dog and pony show. Um, we get a little patron. If you want to join that, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of levels, as you know, we got just gangs and gangs of stuff, access to our Discord, pre and post show. We got live and uncut versions of this podcast. Anything you can think of, except for that weird thing. I'm not going to thump you on the ankles for free now. That's just not going to happen. That would be an uncouth. <laughs> Didn't expect to hear that word today, did you? Uncouth. <laughs> uncouth. <laughs> uh, yeah. We thank you for your support. Uh, each and every Absolutely. week, come hang out with us. We do game streams. Uh, me and Jill. I know mm-hmm. you look at me and Jill and you're like, well, those are racing aficionados. <laughs> Turns out we are. We got retro racing gotten, night. Gotten better. <laughs> We're getting pretty good. We're like 67 yeah. weeks into this. Uh, we've set up our custom track mania server. And if, even if you're not like a huge fan of racing games, we even get our resident physicist, Scott, to pop in. He came in last night because it's yeah, a puzzle game. Like these maps, it, it, it's puzzle platforming with wheels. And yeah. Scott found one hack to a map that I'm going to go back and revisit. Tuesday, we put in 14 new maps, and we're going through like the years. We're currently like in year 2016, mm-hmm. right around there, of uh, user-created maps. There's thousands of them, different types, different styles, and servers up 24 hours. Then on Friday, we come back and we do a points match, and we see who can crash the least and get to the end the quickest, and we hand out free games. <laughs> it's just an excuse for a bunch of Linux-loving miscreants to hang out and chill. And have a yeah. good time. It's so much fun. I love Trackmania. <laughs> it, it's a silly fun game, isn't it? It is. And we, it it, is. this is the old version. We're playing the one from 2011. Yeah. Trackmania squared. So I, if you have a calculator with an iGPU <laughs> in it, you can play yes. it. It runs great under Proton. Done. <laughs> it even runs well on my 10-year-old iMac. <laughs> right. I have it uh, running on the, the box that I built. The box you're on right now, Rectangle, is uh, 5600, yeah. and it runs 1080p60 with everything just slammed. And it looks the business, even today. Yeah, it looks nice. It's nice and arcadey. Thank you for your support. Uh, we have Amazon Wishlist if you want to pick up something for the show. Oh, Jill's boy. got RGB nonsense and sickness, <laughs> like genuinely stuff that will cause your stomach to retch from the horror and virility that is invading your eyes. I got stuff for the studio. It's far less art. You know what this is kind of RGB. Uh, of course, it's the one thing that's out of stock. Oh, yeah. For it the studio. Has to be. <laughs> Bad <laughs> idea. You end up with your name and lights behind me because I always thought that was a silly thing to have on a show. And I was like, by George, I'm going to have one myself. Yeah. And uh, you can send us a note on Amazon, which we will read as part of the, uh, part of the arrangement, part of the deal that we mm-hmm. probably will not alter. Now, let's talk. About these Ooh, games. this is so cool. Oh, that's a cake. That's a, <laughs> oh, can that's a imagine? classic it, Mac it, cake. Dude, it, it, it's like you can get apple and diabetes. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, that's adorbs. <laughs> ben, that's adorbs. adorbs. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my new term. Is that what the kids are saying these <laughs> that's days? That's what the kids are saying, yes. <laughs> adorbs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, is the CRT on your Mac Plus, Mac SE, or Mac Classic 
not working. <laughs> no, Jill, because <laughs> I don't have one. Oh, you don't. <laughs> or is it taking a long time to fire up or starting to give up the ghost? <laughs> well, then we actually have a really fantastic fix for you. The developer Guru3 on GitHub has created a converter to convert the video output of a Mac Plus SE or Mac Classic using a Raspberry Pi Pico to either a VESA compatible VGA signal or a monochrome composite video output. And this is an, an active adapter that digitally reads the Max 512 by 342 at 60.15 refresh and converts it. So the video VGA signal is uh, to 1024 by 768 at 70.2 refresh, which should work with any VESA compatible VGA monitor. And the composite video output is actually PAL uh, uh, 288p at uh, 50 uh, refresh uh, format, but it should work just fine with the NTSC standard as well. And uh, he wanted to, uh, Guru3 wanted, to do this project because he had an old Mac SE motherboard um, that had been laying around for years and years that was uh, parted from an old uh, Mac SE that stopped working. So he took out the motherboard. And now I decided, well, it's time to do something with that motherboard and, and get some video working. So he started this awesome project. And it, it makes us all happy who have a uh, classic Macs. I have a, a Mac SE and a Mac Classic. And in fact, they used to sit be right behind me here in my studio. But mine, fortunately, are working okay. My CRTs are working, are, are working but the uh, Mac SE, it's taking the CRT a little longer to fire up these days. So I've been a little worried about it. So this is a really, you know, ama amazing project to bring your, your old Macs back to life. And all that it, it requires is a, a Raspberry Pi Pico, a logic level, level converter, a breadboard, he, he said may, might be useful, and for VGA output, a Pico VGA demo board or equivalent is needed, like um, the popular uh, Pymore Rant Ronnie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Matroska, Joe. Matroska. <laughs> Matroska. <laughs> yes. Pymore Ronnie P Pico VGA demo base or a Pi 3G or build your own from schematics. And for composite video output, a resistor digital to analog converter or DAC is needed. And so it, it's. It, it it actually doesn't seem like it would take very long. I think you could do it in an afternoon. Uh, the, the software requirements are the Pico C SDK and Pico Extras. And uh, you just have to do some compiling and downloading of dis dependencies, but it really doesn't, doesn't look like it would take a long time because he's done all the work for you. <laughs> I think this is neat, man. Um, yeah. Like seriously trying to find a like CRT replacement for one of those, you just give up. It, it is. I have occasionally seen them on eBay, but it, they are few and far between. Somebody, yeah, I mean, there's going to be somebody like parting one out, right? And yeah. Like, so I have to imagine, which I didn't have time to check, is getting one with a dead monitor it has to be on the cheap these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this this is, you know, a, a great way to get a cheap uh, Mac Classic or Mac, Mac SE if it doesn't have a working monitor and just uh, well, I'm definitely thinking make a about like sourcing it. a four by three panel. Mm. You, you could turn one into like a you know, LCD monitor. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And wire it back up in the original case and just outrage. Outrage. Yeah. Frothing with anger. <laughs> the uh, collector's market. Like, how yes. How dare you? You know how what? How dare you? Right. <laughs> I, I've seen people put little little tiny like a uh, ten inch flat screens in their in their old Macs. <laughs> I was like digging around. It looked like the video bus for those critters were like some type of um, unholy scuzzy bus. Uh, yeah, like, no wonder nobody could figure this out. Um, don't quote me on that. Feel free to correct me, but that's neat. I think that's yeah. absolutely fine, fantastic. And plus, it only requires a Raspberry Pi that you can buy the Pi Pico. That's about it. That's all you. Yes. Can do. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is that is very awesome. And what's really cool is I was looking at some of the other projects because I've looked in the past for myself for for these just just this use case in case my my CRTs die. And I found other ones, but the frequencies are off. So the you see the 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 video output has all the has all the lines because oh, it's, it's easy, not converting. Easy, easy yeah. fix. Just close your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Blindfold won't notice it. <laughs> but uh, Guru, Guru Three has has figured this out, and he said he's still working on the timing, but his looks the best so far that I've yeah. seen. Yeah, like going through that, he's like, you know, the composite's a bit dodgy <laughs> right now, but just give it time; it'll work. Yeah. Great. That's mm -hmm. pretty neat. That's mm -hmm. pretty neat. All right, everyone. We got to run. How far? We, you yes. know what? We're not too bad over time. I was scared to look at the time. Only oh, 38 okay. minutes. Okay. Okay, good. I was like <laughs> 50, 60. <laughs> Let's see if the credits play this week. Let's cool. do it. Boom. Aw. Thank you, Glorious Egg Roll, for the follow on Twitch. I just noticed that. He's a patron, but he's a followed us on twitch and mac geek thank you for the resub for 19 months that's 19 awesome months yeah that's sweet steve why you. did you take such <laughs> offense to my um corvette sleeper van that was mid-engine because <laughs> the 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 cobbling together of the two machines uh two cars have you seen the be, stuff that kind of that yeah. boy makes yeah <laughs> yes the horror but his have <laughs> his is smooth lines when it's meshed together <laughs> uh, yes I mean, Steve, if, this one. if all the people to work at the toy factory of mattel and have access to body parts yeah <laughs> i guess you could find a worse person than Steve. hey everybody thanks for watching we'll see you next bye week. all love you ah uh -huh. oh that yeah. was <laughs> that was the first time i've done that in a long time ben i made noise on my mic i'm sorry I'm not going to take it out either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone.